All right, we are going to jump into multicolor now. Let's turn my browser back on. We are going through all of the cards added to Magic in Innistrad Midnight Hunt. We've done all the mono colors. Now we're going to jump into multicolored. These cards are one or more colors. They're brand new. Um, so let's take a look. The first multicolored card is Angel Fire Ignition. For one, a red and a white. Sorcery. Puts two 1-1 one, one counters on target creature. It gains Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Haste until end of turn. It, there's also a flashback where you can cast this card from your graveyard. For two, a red and a white. Two, so you get to buff a creature, and it gets Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Haste. It's pretty, it gives you the whole slew of everything. Um, then the next card you get um, in the multicolored section is Arcane Infusion for a blue and a red. An instant. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. And this you can also flashback for three, a blue and a red. So... Pluck instants or sorceries from the top of your library. Pretty good card, especially if you're playing Is It, which is red and green, red and blue. Sorry. The next multicolored card is Blade Stitched Scab, which is a blue and a black, so Demir colors. It's a two-three zombie soldier. Other zombies you control get plus one, plus zero. So, 2-3 zombie that buffs other zombies. Um, this is a pretty interesting Demir card. I wish it was a rogue, but it's a zombie soldier instead. Um, so if you're playing a zombies tribal deck, this is going to be for you. The next one is white and black. Can't stay away for one white, one black sorcery. Return target creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Straight to the battlefield. It gains if this creature would die, exile it instead. Um, so it's basically acting as a flashback. Um, and you can flashback, can't stay away, for three, a white and a black. The next is another Demir blue-black card, Corpse Cobble. It's an instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice any number of creatures. Creatures, or, sorry... Create an XX blue and black zombie creature token with Menace, where X is the total power of sacrificed creatures. This is why um, it allows you to sacrifice more than one creature, because the more creatures you sacrifice, the more powerful um, your black zombie creature token with Menace will become. Um, this spell also has flashback, so you pay three, a blue, and a black, and you can cast it again from your graveyard. The next... Multicolored card here is Croaking Counterpart. This guy's fucking adorable and terrifying at the same time. For one, a green and a blue, so Simic colors. Um, it's a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target non-frog creature, except it's a 1-1 one, one green frog. Uh, it has flashbacks, so you pay three, a green and a blue to cast this again. Uh, the next multicolored card is Dawnheart Wardens. For um, one, a green and a white, create a 3-3 three, three human warlock creature with Vigilance. It also has Coven. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. That's pretty good. Um, Dire Strain Rampage is one, a red and a green, or sorcery. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. If a land was destroyed this way, its controller may search their library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Otherwise, its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So this is the, that kind of instance that you should consider 
casting on yourself. Um, destroy one of your lands, and you can grab two lands from your library, so you double lands. Lose one to gain two. Um, otherwise, if you destroy target enchantment or artifact, then that controller looks into their library for one uh, land and puts that onto the battlefield tapped. And this has a flashback cost of three, a red, and a green. Um, the next multicolored card, I believe we went over last week, Diagraph Rebirth. For three, a black and a green. Um, so Golgari colors. The sorcery, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature that died this turn. So you want to cast this after combat. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So classic rebirth card for three, a black and a green. And then it has a flashback cost, so you can cast this again from your graveyard for five, a black and a green. The next multicolored card is Faithful Mending for a white and a blue. Instant, you gain two life, draw two cards, then discard two cards. And you can cast this again from your graveyard for one, a white and a blue. The next multicolor card is Flesh Taker, this creepy little kid uh, with the bull's head. Uh, one and a black. I don't know why I said kid. I guess because it's short in comparison to this corn. Um, so a white and a black for a 2-2 human assassin. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, you gain one life and can scry one card. Um... You can also pay one mana to sacrifice another creature. Flesh Taker gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. And if you play, pay that one mana to sacrifice another creature, it triggers the one life scry one. Gain one scry one um, that Flesh Taker has. So this is a pretty good uh, black, white card. It's cheap. Uh, it's got some interesting buffs. It can become a 4-4 four -four if you sacrifice other creatures. It's pretty good. The next multicolor card is a legendary. Florian the Voldaren Scion. One, a black and a red for a 3-3 vampire noble legendary creature. It has first strike. And at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library where X is the total amount of life your opponent lost this turn. Exile one of those cards and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. So that's an interesting little grab X, exile one, play that one. The next multicolored card is Galvanic Iteration from a blue and a red. I believe we went over this card last week as well. Uh, this is an instant. Whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. And this has flashback one, a blue, and a red. Uh, the next multicolor card is another Golgari card, so I'm intrigued. Golgol Gol Callers Harvest, or a black and a green sorcery. Um, create X2. Two black zombie creature tokens with decay, where X is half the number of creature cards in your graveyard rounded up. And this has flashback, so you can play this again from your graveyard for three, a black, and a green. Uh, that's pretty good. If you have a lot of creatures in your graveyard, you can create uh, a handful or more zombie creature tokens with decayed. And again, decayed means that you can't attack with them, and when you or you can't block with them, can't block with a decayed creature. And if you do attack with them, you sacrifice them after that combat phase. The next multicolor is another Golgari card, Grizzly Ghoul, two a black and a green. It's a four-three zombie bear with trample, Leonardo DiCaprio's worst nightmare. Um. Grizzly Ghoul enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it for each creature that has died this turn. So, you play this after combat, which you should be doing anyway, playing creatures after combat phases. And if a bunch of creatures died this turn, 
Um, it gets a 1-1 one, one counter for each one. It does not say non-token creature. So if you create an army of black zombies with decayed, attack with them all. They're all going to die this turn because they have decay, which means Grizzly Ghoul is going to enter the battlefield with a bunch of 1-1 one, one counters on it. One for each creature that has died this turn. A pretty good card. <coughs> I think in combination with Ghoul Caller's Harvest, this is a pretty powerful combo here. Um, the next multicolored card is Hollowed Respite. The white and a blue for a sorcery. Exile target non-legendary creature, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. If it entered under your control, put a 1-1 counter on it, otherwise tap it. And it has flashbacks, so you can play this again from your graveyard for one, a white and a blue. Um, so this is interesting because you get to um, exile a non-legendary creature, then return it to the battlefield. So if you have a creature that has a very interesting enters the battlefield mechanic, um, you definitely want to... How long has the music been off? I don't even know. Um, if you have a creature card that has an interesting enters the battlefield mechanic, you can play this to re readmit it to the battlefield and get that triggered again. Um, okay. The next multicolored card is Hungry for More for a red and a black. Create a 3-1 black and red vampire creature token with Trample, Lifelink, and Haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Um... So it's an attack now kind of token creature. It, this card has flashbacks, so you can cast it again from your graveyard for one, a black and a red. Um, it's pretty good. It has lifelink, so you're going to get three life when you attack with this creature. And it has haste, so you can attack with it right away. And then you have to sacrifice it at the end step. The next multicolored card is Join the Dance. This is one of the first cards revealed of this set. It's a green and a white for a sorcery. Create two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens. So again, there's a lot of um, emphasis on green-white combos having human creatures. Um, it, this also has flashbacks, so you pay three, a green and a white, and you can cast this again from your graveyard. So in total, you can have four extra 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens and if you go back to our bit um going through all the white cards and all the green cards you will see that there's a lot of emphasis on human creatures in this set for green and white and stuff like this is the reason and then we look at the green and white legendary creature um katilda dawnheart prime is a Legendary creature, 1-1 one, one Human Warlock. It has protection from werewolves, and human creatures you control have tap to add one mana of this creature's colors. So every time you, any human you have on the battlefield has tap to add one mana of its color, um, and you can pay four a green and a white to tap Katilda and put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. So again, we're leaning into the humans for white green. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, it also this also has protection from werewolves. So if you're facing a werewolf deck, uh, this is going to be fine. The next multicolored card is Liesa, Forgotten Archangel, which is Orzhov colors. Two white, white, and a black for a 4-5 angel creature, legendary creature with flying and lifelink. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So anytime a creature dies... Um, and you have Liesa on your board, 
As soon as you go to end the turn, you take all those creatures that died and put them back in your hand. If a creature an opponent controls would die, you exile it instead. So that's why this uh, legendary creature costs so much to cast, is because it is pretty controlling of graveyards and death mechanics. Um, the next uh, multicolored card is Old Stick Fingers. Good old Stick Fingers. It's X, a g black, and a green uh, for a blank, blank horror legendary creature. When you cast this spell, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards. So whatever you pay up here. Put all creature cards revealed this way into your graveyard, then put the rest of, onto the bottom of your library in a random order. And you want to do this because Old Stick Finger's power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So if you pay 10 mana to cast this, plus a black and a green, so 12 mana total, then you continuously look at the top of your library until you've found 10 creature cards. Once you have, you put all 10 of those creature cards into your graveyard, and then you put everything else into the bottom of your library. And then Old Stick Finger's power and toughness is at least 10, because now you've got 10 creatures in your graveyard, plus all the creatures that were put into your graveyard from before you cast Old Stick Fingers. So this is a pretty fucking powerful multicolored card. Um, get lots of creatures into your graveyard, make Old Stick Fingers super powerful, and go from there. The next multicolored card is Rem Carolus, Stalwart Slayer. And he's flying on the back of one of those hippogriffs, the swan slash pegasus creatures. Um, Rem costs one, a red, and a white for a 2-3 human knight creature, legendary creature, with flying and haste. Um, if a spell would deal damage to you or another permanent you control, prevent that damage. So he blocks all spell damage to permanents you control. If a spell would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one instead. So he blocks all spell damage to you and adds to all spell damage to an opponent. That's pretty good. That's why he's cheap and fairly weak, because his, um, his presence is the benefit that you want from playing Rem Careless. The next multicolor card is Rite of Harmony. For, it's a green and white instant. Whenever a creature or enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, this turn, draw a card. And you can play this again from your graveyard for two, a green and a white. Um, the next multicolored card is Rite of Oblivion, another Orzhov card, white and a black, for a sorcery as an additional cast to cost this. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a non-land permanent. Exile target non-land permanent. Um, so you sacrifice one of your non-land permanents to exile one of your opponent's non-land permanents. Um, and you can play this again from your graveyard for two, a white, and a black. Um, the next multicolor card is Root Coil Creeper. A green, it costs one green, one blue, for a 2-2 two, two plant horror. You can tap it to add mana of any color. You can tap it to add two mana of any one color and spend this mana to cast spells from your graveyard. Or you can pay a green and a blue and tap it to exile root, collar, root Coil Creeper and return target card with flashback you own from exile to your hand. So this is very interesting because there's not a lot of cards that bring back exiled cards. Um, and in Simic Colors, it's very interesting to bring other things back because there's lots of creatures and lots of buffing. Um, the next multicolor card we've got here is Sacred Fire. It's red and white for an instant. Um, Sacred Fire deals two damage to any target, and you gain two life. 
And you can play this again from your graveyard for four, a red, and a green, and a white. That's pretty simple. Um, here is the red, or god. Here is the green and white commander. Um, and all of the stuff I've been talking about. Uh, rehumans and having a bunch of humans in your red wa oh. All of the things I've been talking about ab in regards to having humans in your green and white deck um, all comes to a head when it comes to Sigarda, Champion of the Light. So she costs one, a green, and two white. She's a 4-4 angel legendary creature with flying and trample. And when she's on the battlefield, all humans you control get plus one, plus one. So there you go. That's the human buff across the board for all your humans. Um, we've mentioned it a bunch of times that a lot of white and green cards and multicolor green and white cards have are either human creatures or create human tokens. Um, there's lots of humans going on in green and white in this set, and Sigarda is going to take advantage of that by buffing them all. Um, she also has a Coven ability. So whenever Sigarda attacks, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, so you have a Coven, um, you may reveal a human creature, or look at the top five cards of your library, and you may reveal a human creature card from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library. So not only is she buffing humans, but every time she attacks, um, you get to look at the top cards of your library, top five cards, and you get to put a human creature from amongst them into your hand and put more humans on the battlefield. And those humans get buffed up, and then all of a sudden, it's just a human overload. Um, yeah, so lean into that humaning. Humaning, be a human. Uh, the next multicolor card is Siphon Insight. For a blue and a black, it's an instant. Look at the top two cards of target opponent's library. Exile one of them face down, and put the other one on the bottom of that library. You may look at and play the exiled card for as long as it remains exiled. You may spend mana as though it were any color to cast this spell. And it has flashbacks, so you can play this again from your graveyard for one, a blue, and a black. <coughs> this is really interesting because um, it's blue and black, so it's demir colors, and lots of demir players like using other people's spells against them, and this just helps you do that. The next multicolor card is a Simic Commander. Slogurk the Overslime. For one, a green and a blue, you get a 3-3 three, three Ooze Creature with Trample. Whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Slogurk the Overslime. You can remove three 1-1 one, one counters from Slogurk. Um, return it to its owner's hand. Return three 1-1 one, one counters from Slogurk. Return it to its owner's hand. So if you've got three or more creatures from it on, on it, three or more counters on it, you can remove those counters to return Slogurk from your hand because whenever Slogurk leaves the battlefield, return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. The Slogurk is very good um, at ramping if your opponent especially is doing land destruction. Um, yeah. Very interesting. Simic tends to lean into ramp and land spells, so it's pretty, pretty standard stuff here. The next multicolor card is Storm Screelix. Three, a blue, and a red for a 2-4 Drake Horror creature with flying. Instance and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. So you get cheaper spells. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Storm Screelix gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So it becomes a 4-4 four, four. every time you use a spell. And if you're playing Is It, which is blue-red, you're going to be casting a lot of spells. Instants and sorceries. The next multicolored card is Sunrise Cavalier. Sunrise Cavalier is one, a red, and a white for a 3-3 three, three human knight with trample and haste. 
If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Sunfire Cavalier enters the battlefield. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. How's the runtime go? We're like four hours into it. Uh, we've gone through all of this monocolored so far. Uh, we are currently doing the multicolor. We still have... We're about three quarters of the way down the page, so still got a ways to go. Still got a ways to go. So whenever it becomes day or night, or whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control, which is good. Sunrise Cavalier is going to help you uh, buff your other creatures. The next multicolor card is Teferi, who slows the sunset. Um, Teferi is a very popular planeswalker in the Magic the Gathering universe, and he comes back in the Innistrad set. As a planeswalker's card, he costs two, a white, and a blue for a four loyalty planeswalker. His plus one is choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land. Untap the chosen permanence you control. Tap the chosen permanence you don't control. Gain two life. So that's a fucking mouthful for a plus one loyalty ability. Uh, the minus two loyalty ability is look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of your library in any order. The minus seven loyalty ability is you get an emblem with untap all permanents you control during each opponent's untap step. Oh my god, that's so powerful. And you draw a card during each opponent's draw step. So every time an opponent untaps, you untap everything you have. Um, every time an opponent draws a card, you draw a card. That's pretty crazy. This is going to be the pinnacle of white-blue decks in, in Estrad Midnight Hunt, I think. Um, this is going to see a ton of play in Standard because being able to untap everything you own is pretty fantastic. Uh, that's just way too powerful. This is going to be target number one for destroying your opponent's bullshit. Is that is crazy. Uh, day night cycle and a thing for the new expansion. Oh, uh, the day night cycle. So the day night cycle is like for flip cards. Um, because there's a bunch of werewolves and it's like a horror theme. It's it's an older mechanic, but this time they're doing it so that it's an entire board state. So instead of a single card flipping from day to night. The entire board will flip from day to night. Um, so every card that's on the battlefield that is day bound or night bound will flip depending on the time of day. Um, and then there's cards like the Sunrise Cavalier here that get a buff every time day becomes night or night becomes day, even though they're not flip cards. Um, there should be a section on this page that will be dual sided cards, so we'll get there. Um, shortly i hope the next multicolor card is unnatural moonrise for a red and a green sorcery um it becomes night so this sorcery makes it night which is pretty rare until end of turn target creatures get one plus one plus zero and gains trample and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player draw a card and this has flashbacks, so you can play it again from your graveyard for two, a red, and a green. That's pretty cool. Uh, unnatural Moonrise, so you can force it to become night whenever you want to be able to cast this card. You do have to cast it at sorcery speed, so um, you can't cast it instantly. The next multicolor card is Vadric Astral Archmage. Um, he is an Izzet commander. He costs one, a blue, and a red for a 1-2 human wizard. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Vadric Astral Archmage enters the battlefield. Um, 
again, the day-night cycle kind of works like the Monarch um, title does. When you start a game, it's neither day nor night. And once a card enters, like Vadric, um, then the cycle starts. So Vadric forces the cycle to start. Otherwise, if you don't, if a card that forces the cycle never gets played, then it's never day nor night. Um, so Vadric's ability is instants and sorcery spells cost X less to cast, where X is Vadric's power. And whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Vadric. So Vadric continues to grow, and as he grows, sorcery spells you cast cost X less, where X is Vadric's power. So just base, power, and toughness, sorcery spells cost one less. And then every time the day-night switches, he gets more powerful, and your sorcery spells cost less to cast. This is a card you need to get rid of if you're playing against an Izzet deck and they cast this because they're just going to start steamrolling everything. Um, the next card is Vampire Socialite. For a black and a red, you get a 2-2 Vampire Noble with Menace. Vampire Socialite enters the battlefield. Um, if an opponent lost life this turn, put a 1-1 counter on each other vampire you control. So that's pretty powerful. Um... If you're playing black red, you're most likely uh, leaning heavy on the vampire tribal, so you're going to have a lot of vampires on the board. Um, as long as an opponent lost life this turn, each other vampire you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1 1 counter on it. So, as long as vampire socialite remains on the board, every time you cast a vampire, if your opponent lost life this turn, it will enter the battlefield that much tougher. <clears throat> the next multicolor card is Wake to Slaughter. It's three, a black and a red for another sorcery. So um, choose up to two target creature cards in your graveyard. An opponent chooses one of them. Return that card to your hand. Return the other card to the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. And you can play this again from your graveyard for four, a black, and a red. So you pick two cards from your graveyard. Your opponent chooses one of them. You put that card into your hand. And then you put the other card onto the battlefield uh, with haste. And then it's you have until the end of that turn to use it. So it's kind of a tough choice if you're the opponent. Like, you obviously want to give them choose the weaker card because they ha it'll be in their hands, so they'll be able to play it like any other card. Uh, but then you have to accept the fact that the stronger card is going to come out onto the battlefield and swing at you this turn. So that's pretty brutal. Uh, the last multicolor card on this list is Win Winter Thorn Blessing. It's a Simic card, so one green and one blue for a sorcery. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on up to one target creature you control. Tap up to one target creature you don't control, and that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, and you can play this again from your graveyard for its flashback cost of one, a green, and a blue. Um, so we've got some artifacts. We'll go over the artifacts real... Actually, what's after artifacts? Lands... Double face. Okay. So we're going to go over the artifacts real quick, and then we're going to take a quick uh, washroom break, coffee break, and we'll come back and do the double face cards. So the artifacts on this list are start with the Celestis. So for three mana, it's a legendary artifact. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as the Celestis enters the battlefield. You can tap the Celestis to add one mana of any color. You can pay three mana to tap it, and if it's night, it becomes day. Otherwise, it becomes night. Activate only as a sorcery. So the Celestis lets you control the day-night cycle, which is good. Um, this would be really good if, say, it's nighttime, and your opponent is attacking with all their really powerful nighttime creatures. If you have three mana up, you can... Oh, no, you can only activate it as a sorcery. Oh... 
Never mind, you can't do it in response of them attacking. Uh, whenever day becomes night, or night becomes day, you gain one life. You may draw one card. If you do, discard a card. Well, it's a pretty powerful legendary artifact. The next artifact is Crossroads Candle Guide. Four mana, you get a 3-4 Scarecrow creature. Whenever Crossroads Candle Guard enters the battlefield, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. So from any graveyard. My graveyard, your graveyard. Um, and you can pay two to add one mana of any color. I mean, I guess you would want to do that if you were splashing a color and didn't want to have any lands. Um, or you can't find the right land in your deck you, and you need a very specific color. You pay two to add one of whatever color. The next artifact is a jack-o'-lantern, which, you know, they had to do. It's one mana for an artifact. You pay one and tap, sacrifice, jack-o'-lantern, exile up to one target card from a graveyard, and draw a card. Again, you want to exile cards from graveyards because there's a lot of stuff in Innistrad that lets you um, cast something again from a graveyard or pull things from graveyards, so exiling is very powerful in Innistrad. Um, you can pay one to exile jack-o'-lantern from your graveyard to add one mana of any color. The next artifact is Moon Silver Key for two mana. It's an artifact. You pay one and tap it to sacrifice Moon Silver Key. Search your library for an artifact card with a mana ability or a basic land card. Reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle. So. You pay two and then one to sacrifice it. So you pay three total mana to find an artifact with a mana ability or to find a land card. So it's obviously not going to be worth it to find a land card because um, that's three mana for land. There's cheaper ways to get mana. Um, it is worth it, however, to find an artifact card with a mana ability. Um... The next artifact is Pithing Needle, which is a standard in Magic. Um, they're finally reprinting Pithing Needle, which everybody has been asking for for quite a while. Pithing Needle is one mana, and it's an artifact. As Pithing Needle enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So, anything that is a... Um, activated ability on a card can't be used as long as you name that card. The next artifact is a Silver Bolt for one mana. You pay three and tap it. To sacrifice Silver Bolt, it deals three damage to a target creature. If a werewolf is dealt damage this way, destroy it. So it's instant kill on werewolves because it's a Silver Bolt. Um, the next artifact is a Stuffed Bear. <laughs> For two mana, it's an artifact. Um, you pay two, Stuffed Bear becomes a 4-4 Green Bear artifact creature until end of turn. So you animate the, uh, the Stuffed Bear to become a real bear, um, and then you get a 4-4 Green Bear token creature. And that is it for the artifacts. We're going to take a quick um, washroom break. Here's some lands. We've gone over all the lands already. We went over them last week. Uh, but there's some awesome dual lands. There's the absolutely stunning um, black and white lands. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to go over the uh, dual faced cards. We'll go over the flip cards as soon as we come back from washroom break. Be right back. <laughs> 